The L word, legacy, is dicey because what does that mean? Is that putting you before the team? And maybe to some people it does, but I think the greatest legacies are personal achievements that emphasized what the team did and team accomplishments. And I think that's how Nathan McKinnon views it. I pinch myself sometimes because we're watching greatness right in front of us and our fans, myself, you know, hockey fans in general. This is a, this is a, a pretty special player. He's one of the best players on planet Earth. I think this year he is the best player on planet Earth. So what's his legacy for this franchise? Hall of Fame, Rafters, Stanley Cups, MVPs, Hart Trophies, the whole nine yards. It's a coming. When I first saw McKinnon skate, it's so aggressive and not in a, in a bad way. It's just power. It's different than so many other skaters that we compare anybody else to. And you really can't really go back and do a like for like on, well, he skates exactly like so-and-so. Nathan McKinnon skates like Nathan McKinnon. So when you see him on the ice, wow. This is a number one pick by a million miles. This guy plays the game, sees the game, thinks the game differently than everybody else does. My first impressions of Nate, I'd heard a lot about him, uh, you know, as a young hockey player and when he was coming up, but uh, having the opportunity to meet him and, and skate with him when he was younger, um, I think the biggest thing that stuck out as a player was his speed. Um, I think since then he's continued to, to evolve a lot of other parts of his game, but uh, he was just a, a guy that could really skate and had a great shot and uh, just his one-on-one -on -one ability was um, was pretty much unmatched. Well, I, I, I've been playing against Nathan 1450, so I knew he was special at, even at that age. Um, but I got to be honest, just coming from junior, how strong he was and how good he was in junior, I'm not surprised, but um, credit to him, though he never stopped working. The Colorado Avalanche are proud to select with our first pick from the Halifax Mooseheads, Nathan McKinnon. Well, this is unbelievable. Um, I've dreamed about this moment for the majority of my life and to, uh, for it to finally come true and to be part of a, this or, an organization like this is, uh, is definitely surreal. Having been around in the early days uh, with the greats Joe Sackick and Peter Forsberg and Patrick Waugh and Adam Foote, of course Rob Blake comes here and all the great Avalanche players over the years, Milan Haydu. It was hard for me as a guy who lived in that era and worked for the team in that era to think that anybody could ever reach those heights. And then along comes this guy, 29, who had a good start to his young career, but he hadn't gotten to his potential. And then late October 2017, he goes Pew! to the moon. Picked up by McKinnon, skating out in the center. There it is, McKinnon shoots. Let's go! On the pass, brought in by McKinnon, steps through, he shoots, he scores! What a move! One nothing avalanche. 8.30 to go, McKinnon, pass, shot, scores! His vision wasn't this good. And then all of a sudden, it's just expanded where he's finding everybody. You know, it's bigger than uh, all of us. It's bigger than the, the league even, you know, the Stanley Cup. Uh, it's such a famous thing. Uh, I think we're on it for almost 70 years, and that's such the best thing about team sports, and especially our sport, having that unique trophy. 2022 Stanley Cup playoffs, where do you start? Nathan McKinnon in particular, I mean, the, the one play that, that everyone goes back to was his coast-to-coast -coast move to score the hat trick in game five on this sheet of ice against the St. Louis Blues. The worst part about that, the Avalanche don't win the game. They lose in overtime, have to go back to St. Louis, and the conversations about Colorado not being able to close out the second round start to come back. But Nathan McKinnon, he had 117 shots on goal through four rounds of the Stanley Cup playoffs in 2022. It's 
not just the skating which we talk about all the time, pucks towards the net, it's his drive, it's everything else that almost wills everybody else to be better. When that game starts, it takes a player like Nathan McKinnon to will that into existence. Two to one is a close hockey game. It's what game six of the Stanley Cup final should be. But for McKinnon to open the scoring, get that one timer, Arturi Lekin in the other one. I mean, he, he just knew it had to be, it had to be him. You know, a lot of sacrifice that goes into it. Um, you know, it's a huge thing. I mean, anything in life, you have to sacrifice a lot, I think, to, to really get what you want. You know, after we won, I remember being in the locker room with everybody for a couple hours, uh, you know, drinking beer out of the cup and singing. And that was the most special thing for me, uh, more than what raising it even or on the ice, just being together as a group with our coaches and uh, management ownership, just us, uh, was, was really cool. Favorite story? Probably one of the first times I met him. Um, uh, we were we were training, and it was actually uh, it was at my house. His dad was there, and uh, we both uh, trained with Andy O'Brien. And uh, Nate was doing a drill, and Andy ended up starting to talk to Nate's dad and I about uh, some of the training stuff. He, I think he was supposed to do it for a certain amount of time until Andy said stop. But because Andy was caught up in the conversation. Nate continued to do the drill, and I just remember looking over, uh, seeing, I think Nate might have been 16, maybe, and he was just exhausted, and he was still doing the drill, and Andy had forgot to stop him, but I think you could tell pretty quickly that uh, he was willing to do whatever it takes to, to train or, or work as hard as he needed to work. As good as he is on the ice, he's also equally as, as competitive and driven off the ice. Uh, in terms of how he takes care of himself so that he's able to, to go and compete at such a high level night after night, game after game. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, I guess it's just you never really think you're that good. Um, you know, I, I really don't ever think I've arrived, you know, at where I want to be. I just think there's so many amazing players in this league. I look at every every morning or every night watching and I, and I see how great they are. And, feel like I can add things that they do or whatever it is. I just think it's just in me to want to get better. And I think that's the best quality in a teammate is someone that wants to get better and practices their game, works on themselves every day. I really enjoy the process of it, um, of just trying to improve. You know, Nate's a very serious in hockey almost 24 seven. So it's a lot of work off the ice um, to be in the best shape he can and treats his body very well the way he eats. and. I think a lot of guys have followed that here, and it's why they're forward successful as a team, I think. And, um, you know, the leaders here are, are very good on that stuff. The, the will of Nathan McKinnon, the, the internal drive, the want to, is simply amazing. And you can have all kinds of guys with skill and speed and power and know the game and that sort of thing, but the extra intangible is the will to win. The extra intangible is the will to put in the work continue to hone the craft, even when you've become a superstar and won, and continue year after year after year to, to have that internal drive exposed for the entire world to see. It's something that's simply amazing. He would always tell you that he can be better, that he wants to be better, and it's hard for us to handle that sort of concept, but for him, that is the goal, is to be better, again, in order to help his team win. So, all those little habits, and he'll pick up things from all over the place, whether it's from diet, whether it's from rest, whether it's from a technique. He applies all those into his little Nathan McKinnon mixture to try and create the greatest hockey player possible. And that's what I love about Nathan McKinnon is that as great as he is, to him, he can always be better. Set down deep, McKinnon turns it back, and it scores! Double beat to push all the way over, stop McKinnon, there's a shot, score! He knows that nobody touches it, he's probably going to go in, it's still kept in, long wrist shot, Sam gets it, shot, score! Nathan! Pass 
for Nathan McKinnon in the clear. He scores! It's the first time to 50 for the back attack, Jack. Final minute of the second. Watch out. McKinnon's got wheels. McKinnon's going to go right around Middleton. Here he comes again. Hello! Here come the hats. There's the MVP chance. He's simply a pure 200-foot player now. He back checks like crazy. He's good in the defensive zone. He makes players around him better. But the overall complete game of Nathan McKinnon is right now in the National Hockey League number one. He should be the Hart Trophy winner. He's an all-around player, one of the greatest all-around players. So if you have an all-around performance on a nightly basis throughout the entire season, that is an MVP. It feels like a really long time ago that we won. I feel like a lot's happened uh, for whatever reason, you know, it was just two years ago, but, you know, I think just a different group, a different challenge. Um, you know, we had such an amazing team. Uh, I'm excited to see what this group can do as well. He won one. One isn't good enough. I don't think two is good enough. And that's the point for Nathan McKinnon is to be the best he can be so he can be one of the greatest teams in the modern NHL era. It's very, very difficult to win the Stanley Cup. You have to be all in, you have to be fully committed, you have to be willing to play through pain, you have to be willing to sacrifice your body, you have to be willing to play hurt, you have to be willing to do every little thing that it takes in a game, in a shift, in a period, in, a, in an entire hockey game, and then a series, just to win that series. And then you've got to win four series. So I think all in means that every single time you're on the ice, you've got to do what it takes and lay it all out there. And it may sound cliche, but it's the God's honest truth because Lord Stanley's Cup has not come to the faint of heart. Yeah, well, I think uh, C-Mac and Joe, they went all in by trading a lot of picks. And, you know, we really appreciate that from them, that they believe in our group. And hopefully we can make the most out of it. And, I just think all in from, from the players is doing the hard things that are worth it in the end. I pinch myself sometimes because we're watching greatness right in front of us and our fans, myself, you know, hockey fans in general. This is a pretty special player. He's one of the best players on planet Earth. I think this year he is the best player on planet Earth. So what's his legacy for this franchise? Hall of Fame, Rafters, Stanley Cups, it's a coming. The L word legacy is dicey because what does that mean? Is that putting you before the team? And maybe to some people it does, but I think the greatest legacies are personal achievements that emphasize what the team did. And I think that's how Nathan McKinnon views it. That's where legacies are sealed, inspiring the next generation of players. I want to be like Nathan McKinnon. That's what a legacy means.